Thanks for joining us for today's live stream devotional. We pray that you'll be edified and uplifted by today's message. We want to make sure during this time that we're connected with you. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like us on Instagram. And don't forget, if you need to update your email, phone number, or contact information, please do so at newhopechurch.net. Online giving is also available at newhopechurch.net. Thanks for joining us. Today's live stream devotional will begin in just a moment. Well, good Saturday morning. When I woke up today, I had no intention of videoing any kind of devotional thoughts for today. Really all I had on my mind was tomorrow morning's Easter Sunday message. I've never lived through an Easter week quite like this one. And I'm assuming that the disciples and the friends of Jesus never had lived through an Easter week before that first one either. I know we've been doing uh, sheltering and the word devotions Monday through Fridays for these last few weeks. You've been hearing from members of our staff and members of our congregation as they share devotional thoughts, just as a way of keeping us encouraged during these rather peculiar days. We've sort of been taking the weekends off on that and, and I'm good with that. But this morning there was just something rather compelling that um, the silent Saturday before Easter that, um, that Sabbath day back in those days uh, had to be an unusually difficult, challenging day. And somehow it didn't seem right that during this season for us that Saturday ought to be silent either. So um, Andrew was gracious enough to come join me this morning and provide a little, uh, what I hope will be encouragement out of one of the Psalms. Psalm 22 was written by David. It is both personal to David because he was living through some hard moments, but it was also a prophetic psalm, a messianic psalm. In fact, the opening words to this psalm are gonna sound very, very familiar to us during the Easter season. But we think about them not as words of David, but as words of Christ from the cross. And yet David wrote those very same words a thousand years before Jesus himself uttered them on the cross. I think Psalm 22 is good reading while we're waiting for this silent Saturday to come to a conclusion. I don't know about you, but waiting days are difficult days. We're learning a whole lot more about waiting these days than probably we ever have before. But none of us like to wait in a waiting room at a doctor's office or a hospital. We don't like to wait in lines at a grocery store or any kind of shopping store. Waiting is just difficult for all of us. David gives us some good wisdom in this chapter. This psalm is actually divided into two parts. The first part of this psalm is David expressing his feelings, and he does this in prayer. He expresses his feelings about all the enemies that seem to be surrounding him at the moment. He's being attacked from a lot of different directions. and. As he looks up and looks out, all he can see is, is people trying to get at him. David also expresses his feelings about his physical pain. I don't know what the health issues are. I don't know what the injuries may be, but David indicates that he's going through some personal physical pain. And then the third thing that David expresses in the first part of this prayer is I think because of all the enemies surrounding him and because of the physical affliction he's going through, he has a sense in his own heart that maybe God has abandoned him. Though that's not the truth, that's what he's feeling. What I appreciate about this psalm is even though David is having a pity party, David does a very wise thing. He expresses his bad feelings to a great and gracious God. And as a result, the second half of the psalm is very different than the first half. You see, the second half of the psalm is the results when we allow God to influence our feelings rather than allowing our feelings to shape our view of God. Often bad things happen and we say, well, God's not that good. We allow our frustrations and feelings of a moment to reshape our image of God rather than allowing the knowledge of God that the scripture tells us about to reshape our feelings. 
And you see, there's a big, there's a big mood swing in David in these two halves of the Psalms. And that will happen with us when we talk to God and we let God remind us of his presence, of his promises, and of his peace. We can enter prayer frustrated. We can end the prayer faithful. We can start a prayer with fear and anxiety. We can end a prayer with comfort and encouragement. And so, as I read this psalm, I hope you'll get the sense of what David went through, and maybe it will be helpful for us on this silent Saturday. You see, the failure that David felt in the first part is swallowed up in the victory of the promises and the presence of a very powerful and personal God. Christ does care about us today. Listen as I read. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far away from saving me, so far away from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. I cry out by night, and I am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. It's in you that our fathers put their trust. They trusted you, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and they were saved. In you they trusted, and they were not disappointed. I almost sense David's disappointment in the fact that his forefathers were not disappointed. David goes on to say, but, but I am a worm. I'm not a man. I'm scorned by men and I'm despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults. They shake their heads and their fists at me. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's milk. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me when trouble is near. There's nobody else to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Basham encircle me. Roaring lions tearing at their prey. They open their mouths against me. I'm poured out like water. I'm dried up. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It's melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust like death. Dogs, <laughs> reference to Roman soldiers. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men encircle me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can, I can count all my bones. People are staring and gloating at me. They divide my garments. And they cast lots for my clothing. But you, you, O oh Lord, be not far off. Oh, my strength comes quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword and my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lion. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere all the descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of any of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, but he's listened to his cry for help. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill the vow. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. And he rules over the nations. 
All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. For he has done it. What's he done? <laughs> For David, David is writing the promise that a Savior will be raised from the dead. He has done it. God bless you on this silent Easter Saturday. Thank you for joining us today. Our goal is to bring you a devotional every day, Monday through Friday for the foreseeable future. For more information about other upcoming events and activities at New Hope, both online and in person, visit us at www.newhopechurch.net. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.